became my favorite bag that I've had for 21 years. It's an Eagle Creek that's traveled all over the world with me, and we are beginning to deconstruct it. So it will work both as a costume and as a suitcase. This upper section we have removed from the backpack section. We're leaving the, pat the strong padded shoulders. We basically have this section, which will be used to mount the costume onto, and then this section, which will, when it's attached, hold the headdress, the costume, the feathers, and everything she needs to put on the costume. We've been working on the bodice. We've started with a pre-made piece, and we've been, uh, it's got plenty of boning and uh, structure and stretch in it for her. We've also added pieces on the bottom and then started covering the front uh, section with the brocade. This also gets some beadwork and some rhinestones before we get done. So this is the beginning of the mechanics of the back fan for the costume. It will fit in the suitcase nicely enough, but it's not gonna hold my plumes on the end. They're gonna have to somehow fit over these because I can't, of course, we cannot bend the feathers in half. So, but the rest of it is working well. Um, Jane has constructed a beautiful fan piece which will be used both for her train and her upper feather spray that will come off of her back. You know, I love old papers, or ephemera as it's officially called. Things that are to last but a day, uh, airplane tickets, maps, brochures, newspapers, all that groovy stuff that's sitting in attics and basements everywhere. It's nice to give it a new life. I've used it a lot throughout the studio and walls and other objects. We've done boxes and luggage with it. And today we're going to cover a couple of walls as well as make several lampshades out of post-World War II paper. Well, now we're ready to decoupage the walls with ephemera. All we have to do is move the furniture and we're ready to go. I'm going to be using Golden Sprint's Fluid Matte Medium. I've used this a lot and it really gives you a nice finish both behind the paper and on top of the paper. almost done with our decoupage walls. There's just a couple of things that we need to take care of. First of all, the bottom baseboard looked a little blank to me, and I found this really cool old packing tape from an old shoe store. So I'm gonna run that around the bottom. And then the other thing we need to take care of is the switch plate cover. I'd like to coat everything with shellac, and you can buy shellac in the stores, but I like all the amazing colors you get when you distill it yourself, and we do that here at the studio. Let me show you how. So I've pulled a whole bunch of shellac off the shelves to show you all the different kinds. Shellac is actually shell lac. It comes from the lac bug, and the lac bug makes a shell to live in, which it's sucking out of the tree which is the sap from the tree while it's hatching its eggs. And then these little houses are then harvested to make shellac. Shellac is used for a lot of different things. It's used as a varnish. It has been used for thousands of years. It's actually a non-toxic organic coating. I like it a lot better than polyurethane for those reasons. Are you ready for the vibraphone? Uh, not yet. I'm gonna mix up some lemon shellac for the lampshades and some ruby shellac for the wallpaper. Cover it with a cloth and use a, a rolling pin. You can also use a hammer, a meat hammer. I love using old mortar and pestle. See about what size crushed it into. The next step is to use alcohol to dissolve the shellac. No, not that kind. <laughs> this kind, denatured alcohol. First step is to take some of your the finest 
grains, the most crushed, and you have to coax the uh, alcohol into taking the shellac. You don't want very big flakes in there. And the main thing to do when you're distilling shellac here is just to make sure that it gets stirred up and make sure that every side of every flake has alcohol on it. And once that happens, then it's gonna start taking it in. For some reason, the first sprinkles that you put in seem to take forever. They don't want to take in. And then once that happens, then it's almost as if the cell structure is opened up and you can move a lot faster. The wall is ready for shellacking. I like to coat the edges a little extra for the antique look, and then of course fill in the center. You can put as many coats on as you like. Obviously, each creates a darker and darker finish. All we have to do is replace the furniture, and this project is finished. Jane has finished the extension on the elbow gloves, so she's got elbow gloves that are coming all the way up to this upper bust line. And then on the hips, we're trying to create this really huge volume of hips. So we're going to use vacuum-formed vinyl that is made for stage armor. By the time we get it painted up, you won't be able to tell the difference between it and metal. We're then using 30 yards of bridle tool underneath this plastic to create a large hip line. And then I'm going to do some spray painting in that to variegate the colors we're using, which are hot pink, red, burgundy, and purple. We've laid out eight layers of the stiff red tool on the floor here to cut the three layers of skirts. You know, we're, we're not looking for like a little, little like dress and you know, some little girl running around it. We want something good. And, uh, and I, don't, I don't know. I really don't know if they can do that.